We need to talk. My wife sat down across from me with an aggressive expression on her face. No, I shook my head. We really don't have to. But if we must, let me grab a beer, since experience tells me I'll do more listening than talking. When she snorted in disgust, I went to the kitchen to get a beer. Want one? I asked, taking two mugs for myself. This was likely going to be a long conversation. No, get out of here, please! I knew my wife. She had everything scheduled by the minute, and she was afraid that if I delayed, she'd mess up the delivery. When I sat down, she began, We haven't had sex in over two years, and- Wait! That was your choice, not mine! I took a sip of my beer, savoring the cool liquid. It wasn't my choice! You couldn't keep this up and stop trying, you lame-ass man! My wife was free with her weasel words. It was the odor you got and the one you refused to fight that made me lose the hunt. I shook my head. I get the urge when you're not around. She hummed. Yeah, right. Like I believe that. She sat up straight and started picking at the lint on her dress. Well, I want to have sex, so I'm going out on Friday, and if all goes well, I won't be back until Sunday night. Okay. I sipped some more of my beer. Good. That's all you have to say, okay? She grinned. You're a goddamn lame-ass man. Delilah, I don't care what you do. I'm not interested in you anymore. I've done everything I can, and you've made it clear you want nothing to do with me. Another beer. Maybe I'll get drunk. Something good should come out of this conversation. What? You did everything you could? What did you do? You did nothing but roll over and fall asleep. You're worthless in bed. There was pure hatred in her face now. You know, I asked you to take care of that disgusting odor, but you... I began. I went to the gynecologist. She said there's no odor. You're just making it up. She accused me. Making it up? said I quietly. I can tell when you pee in the bathroom, the room smells like you. And if you spread the sheets at night, I'm overwhelmed by a gust of rot. She glared at me. I braced myself for a slap, but it didn't come. Instead, she bestowed a wicked smile on me and said, you pathetic, impotent little man, I don't know why I ever married you. I don't know, probably because of my money. I picked at the label of the beer bottle. And you know I've tried. Last year, I went to my doctor and got a prescription for sildenafil. We got into bed and I held my breath, but what did you do? She was examining her fingernails. I stared at her, unable to contain the resentment and the memory of humiliation in my eyes. And you lay there and laughed, and then you leaned back and fell asleep. I was left with just that smell. Yeah, well, fine. I want to be fucked by a real man, so I'm going away for the weekend, she smirked, daring to object. I don't care, I'm not interested in you. I finished the first beer and uncorked the lid of the next. You know, there's this game I play. If I wake up in the morning and snuggle up to you if I can't feel my breasts, I make a bet with myself whether I'm holding my breasts or a roll of fat. I chuckled. I've found that I really can't tell the difference. So, believe me, your body doesn't interest me. The odor, the fat on your thighs, and the rolls of fat are all so, so very unattractive. I took a big gulp. So I have virtually no interest in what you do with your body. Hopefully, if you decide to cheat, you'll find someone who can penetrate that fat. And I hope it will be black. She sat back, looking at me thoughtfully. That would turn you on, wouldn't it? It was her turn to look at me in disgust. I always knew you were a cuckold at heart. You want to come and watch? She snorted. I looked up embarrassed. Pictures would be nice, I pleaded. She laughed pathetic. She got up and walked away. We didn't speak again that week. Friday night at 10 o'clock, my phone rang. It was a picture of my wife naked with a dark cock in her arms. An hour later, the first video arrived. It seemed strange to me that a man with muscles as sculpted as my wife's lovers would be interested in the tub of lard he was bouncing on. I heard my wife call out to me, see how a real man does it. Saturday morning, another video, this time a full act. Her expression changed, and I could see that she was overcome with ecstasy. When he finally thrust forward and froze in his climax, they both collapsed on the bed. As Delilah reached forward to turn off her cell phone camera, she smiled contemptuously at me and said, There you see, cuckold, a real man takes what he wants. That got me thinking.
It was one of the things that I thought made my marriage difficult. I always believed that lovemaking should be mutual. I never imposed myself on a woman. I always let my partner decide what we would do and when we would do it. It was this power I gave her that allowed my wife to treat me like shit for the last ten years of our marriage. I stopped looking at the rest of the pictures that came in that day and on Sunday. I'd had enough. And it was about as sexy as watching two pigs roaring. All those folds of fat rippling back and forth. Ew. Sunday night when she got home, I was sitting in my chaise lounge watching a video. She stood in front of the TV, blocking my view. So, cuckold, are you satisfied? Did you enjoy watching a better man have me? I smiled. No, darling, it was actually quite disgusting. The only good thing about it was that I couldn't smell you. She looked down at me. You can't fool me. You wanted those pictures. You wanted a better man to take pictures of me. I paused the movie. I didn't want to get off my seat. No, honey, I told you the truth. I didn't care. I could have done without the pictures. I smiled at her. I gave her my best smug grin. But my lawyer liked the pictures. She told me that without the pictures, infidelity would be hard to prove, so I really appreciate you sending them. They'll be very helpful in the divorce. Divorce? Infidelity? No, you knew. You gave me permission. You know you did. She looked at me bewildered. Ah, no, I expressed indifference to you. I didn't care what you were doing. Would you like to hear a recording of our conversation? I grabbed a beer that day so I could record my phone. My lawyer also told me it would be helpful. Actually, I probably lied to you. I really wanted you to oversleep because it would help me get out. Get out of this hell hole of a marriage. I smiled to myself again as my movie started up again.